Welcome back to another Natron tutorial. In this video, we're going to be using the tracker node to do stabilization on video footage. So in the last video, we kind of had an intro to stabilization, uh, to a tracker, sorry. Um, in this video, we're going to be doing stabilization. So we're going to go to Pixabay. It's pixabay.com. And we're going to just find some footage that's kind of shaky that we can stabilize. And so I changed this to video, and we'll just type in bike. Um, this is similar to the last video we chose. This is the footage we did last time. We tracked this, but we see this was shot on a, tr a tripod, and so it's all nice and stable already. But if we hover over this one, it's kind of we can we can see it's shaky, and there's camera movement involved. So this is a great one to practice some image stabilization on. Uh, so we see this is also Creative Commons, free for commercial use, no attribution required. We really appreciate um, this user for uploading this video and sharing it with us. So we click free download. You can download 720 or 1080. I already have this downloaded. I think I did the 1080p version. And it is here in my downloads folder. It's called Cyclist. I'll just left click and drag it in. And then we can see we have this video footage and we can play it and view it in Natron. So what I want to do, I only want to do a, the first maybe, we're just going to stabilize the first 50 frames. So I go down to my project and I change the uh, last frame to 50. So now we have frame one to frame 50. And then we need to look at two on the video and see the frame rate of this video is 25 frames per second. And our frame rate down here is 24 frames per second. So we'll change this to 25 so that our project matches our video since we're just doing a single video file. Um, that'll be good. And now we can play this. It'll just play through 50 frames and then keep looping through. I'm going to click here and just left click and resize so we can see bigger on our video. All right, now we want to add in our tracker node. So the tracker node is, remember, here. We go down to tracker. Or if I hit this delete, we can also just hit the tab key and start typing in tracker and select it that way. So we have tracker here. And then we do want to... Um, automatically track. We could choose points if you remember. Um, we don't have to tie this tracker into anything. We can manually track frame by frame if we want to and just click and add a tracker node. But we're going to tie it into our source. So we'll left click so that the source, so that the data from this video is going into our tracker. And then we click add. We'll add a tracking node here. So we click add. And we see this green plus sign up here showing that we're going to add a tracker. And actually, before I actually add this, I'm just going to watch this through a couple times because I don't. I want to pick a point that stays kind of stable and is very clear that the, 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 the Natron will be able to automatically track and follow. So I'm going to watch this through a few times and see if I can find a point. I don't want to select a point where he's walking in front of, like the handlebar here or parts of this car, because he walks in front of it. That'll mess up the tracking. So I think this car seat looks like it's, there's points on that car seat right here, or this bike seat for a child that, um, that don't get covered up throughout the whole, the whole video. So I will choose this point right here. I'll zoom in a little bit. We'll click right in the center of it. And we'll just choose this as our tracking point. And so we can see what Natron is seeing to track off of. And we'll just make this a little bit larger maybe two about like there, and then we can see. So it's going to track that point there. We have track one. We're on frame one. And so if we click forward, it'll just track an individual frame. We can see what that looks like. So that barely did it. It's very subtle, but we can see there's a little line of the frame before it and the frame after it, frame two. So it is tracking that correctly. And if we just hit track forward, it will quickly track forward through everything. So that was way fast. It's only 50 frames. Go back to the start and we can just play through. So now we see there's this gray line with lots of points on every a, a point on every frame and it's tracking through properly. And just to make sure we can zoom in and make sure that at any given time that it is right on the point that we want it to be. We can go frame by frame and just kind of look and see. So it's tracking. It's found this part of the video and it's followed it. Um, okay, so I forgot to, to say this, but the type so I, the type of tracking that I have this on is just on transform now, which is basically just looking at how the video moves like this, up and down and left to right. What it's not looking at is rotation. So how it moves like rotating, like clockwise or counterclockwise. 
and it's not also not looking at zooming in and out. It's not looking for changes in zooming. It's only looking for, oops, it's, uh, let me go back. I accidentally created a tracking point. We'll delete that. It's only looking at this, left, right. It's looking at any kind of movement this way, if that makes sense. But we can change that. We can say, we want you to track rotation as well, or scaling, zooming in and out. But I think for this video, actually, I don't, there might be a little bit of rotation. There's really not, actually. There's really not much rotation. So this is just going to be, we're just tracking the transform. Um, but we can track those other ones in addition to. But this one, just leave it on transform. Okay. We go over here to the transform tab. And we can see um, our options for this. And so right now, motion type is set to none. And so it's not really, it, we can't export any of the data from this tracker because we've told it that, we told it that it's set to none. But if we, we can tell it what we want to do. Match move is what we did in the last video where we tracked an, an object across a moving, like a moving object in a stable um, setting. This time we're going to do stabilize. So we want to stabilize the, just all the footage in general. We're not trying to you know, track a certain object necessarily. So we have that stabilized. And then transform type, corner pin, we're not going to use. We're going to use transform because we're just, we just want to move it just like this. We just want to move the, our, kind of our view window, what we can see. We want to move the, picture, the video footage so that it always is staying stable instead of, instead of being bouncy. I feel like I'm, I think I'm over, I think I'm talking too much here. Anyway, we're just stabilizing the footage. So when we go down to stabilize and transform, when we change the settings accordingly, we set keyframes on the translate. Um, and so if we look through here, so we see this is, these are changing with every frame. The translator changing, the, the location of this point is changing. So now we can export, so we can just export, we can go back to, it doesn't matter what frame we're on, but we'll just click export. And here's the data for this in a transform node. So if we double click on this, we see this transform node already has keyframe data. And if we move forward, it's changing, it's moving whatever we put into here, it's moving it. And I'll just show you an example of that. So it's not necessarily moving the image because the image, the video is not put into there. So it's whatever we put in. So if we just disable this by hitting the D key, this data is really tracking this point here is what it's really doing. And so, oh, whoops, there's nothing to view. So let's add in just to, sh to illustrate this. I'm going to render a color wheel here. And we will put the color wheel as the source of this transform, and then we'll view it. So now we should be viewing this color wheel. And is it off the screen, or why can't we see it? Let's hit, go back to play. Oh, okay. So I was doing it backwards. I was trying to um, have the color wheel. I had it in here as the source, but what we need to is to have the color wheel be the source. So we have to start with the color wheel, then we take and transform the color wheel, and then go to the viewer. So now what this will do, it'll follow along. So this color wheel will actually move based on those points. Does that makes sense. We're tracking the color wheel to those points. So that's basically that's what we've done. I just, I just want to kind of illustrate that, that we've created a track that we can map an object to. But instead of mapping the color wheel to it, we are going to delete the color wheel, and we're going to re-enable this, and we're going to map our video to it. So now our video will move based on these nodes, and these we, the information for these nodes are based on the video, and that creates a nice stabilizing effect. So we'll go through here and we'll see. Let it render through once. So there we go. And so what it's really doing is just moving our, it's moving our picture. And it's got, looks like we have some artifacting going on. We'll have to take a look and see why it's doing that. But if we zoom in here, we see like this bike seat, for example, it's staying, well, until he starts moving it, it's staying nice and steady. Or like this, well, this car seat's a good example. That's what we're stabilizing. So it's not moving. It's st actually staying very stable there. And we're getting this artifacting, but that's not, that doesn't, that's probably won't happen for you. It says a glitch on my computer, I'm thinking. So everything stays stable there. And compared to the old view, if we hit the tab key and type in viewer, we can add another viewer. And we can put 
we can have that go just right to our original footage and then we can you know move that left click and drag over here so we have our viewer one and viewer two side by side and if we zoom in we go back to frame one and if we zoom in on like this uh, seat this bike seat in both videos we see in the one it'll be sh kind of shaky and in the other one it'll just be nice and not shaky so yeah this one on the right it's all shaky and the one on the left not shaky and then we'd have to crop that in too so because what this is really doing I'm going to close this viewer to um, and what so what this is really doing ah don't go that way put this back in here ah, I don't know what I did there um, it, it's it's moving so if we were to export this we'd have a black line because we see the bottom of our viewer we will have a black line on the left hand side we will have a black line on the bottom because it's actually moving this so what we need to do in addition is apply a crop so we would want to like if I hit tab here and type in um, crop we can just crop our uh, yeah afterwards right so we can just crop this so from the bottom Oops. We can just come up here and crop this into like that, crop this in like that. So now we're cropping just our, our video. So we're just seeing um, that part. And actually it even comes up even more to there, doesn't it? So we can kind of you know crop this in. Um, and actually what we then what we need to do is scale. <laughs> so then we need to take and get a I guess we could have just done a transform node because it has crop built into it. So now we can transform this and we scale this up to the size and we move it so that it feels like our whole viewer. And so now that wasn't the best way to do it, but we see that it does actually. And I, I don't like that artifacting, but we can see here the, the nice stable. So we see it's a very stable um, image there, right? So. That's some basic image stabilization uh, Stabilization using a tracker. We just used one tracking point on our tracker. If we wanted to do these, if we wanted to do tracking plus rotation, we need two points. We need two tracking points on each frame because to rotate, so if it's rotating like 90 degrees or you know rotating towards the right, you need a secondary point so you can tell what that rotation is. And same with scaling. You need you need a secondary point so you can compare the two and tell if the if you need to, if it's scaling in or scaling out. So that's using the tracker node to create image stabilization in Natron. Hope you liked this video. Go ahead and like and subscribe if you had, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video.